Hi everyone, this is your girl Robin Shockley with Focus Forward with Robin on the go. You never know where I'm going to be. I'm here at 106LiveRadio.com in Atlanta, Georgia today. I have a very special guest with me, Miss Connie Burris. Welcome, Miss Connie. Thank you. Yes, Miss Connie, you have written a book. Tell us a little bit about your book and, and um, what it's about. Yes, my book is called uh, My Silent Cry from Victim to Victor. And it's basically uh, my experiences with domestic violence and how uh, I conquered it. Okay. Well, Connie, you also have a ministry. Tell us a little bit about your ministry. I do. My ministry is called Forever Grateful Ministries. And it is uh, basically where I get uh, women in a non-judgmental atmosphere where they can speak about their experiences with domestic violence and how they overcame it also. Wow. Well, you know what? We just wrapped up this interview with you today at the radio station, and mm -hmm. I literally found out more about her than what I thought. You know, somebody that has a domestic violence story always intrigues me and always catches my attention, but yours is very deep, and you have like several instances that, taken, that have been taking place in your life. So start off with telling us about your home life and and then what happened to you as a teenager? Um, I, I am um, the youngest of seven children. I grew up with my, both parents in the home, um, but they were uh, heavy drinkers, and um, the home was um, full of abuse, too, mm. so between my parents. And uh, so going on with that, uh, that's all I knew, so I began getting into uh, domestic violence relationships. The earliest was uh, going on a blind date, and I was uh, gang raped by three gentlemen. Gang raped? Wow. So where were you at when this happened? I was at a house party that mm -hmm. uh, I went to. Uh, it was our first date, like I said, and I uh, went to a house party, and everyone had left the party, and afterwards, that's when the um, incident happened. So how did, what, what? How did it happen? I mean, everybody was gone, so what was your reaction to when they came to you? My reaction was uh, in shock um, mm -hmm. because they put me into a back room and mm -hmm. uh, they all um, took their turns on um, raping me initially. Wow, and how old were you, Connie? I was 17 years old. What kind of emotions were you going through at that time? Uh, is me having a uh, low self-esteem uh i was hurt i was afraid i was scared i was thinking that no one would believe me if i told them because they so threatened you right they did they threatened me they said if i told anyone that they would come and uh hurt me mm. or my family members so did you tell anybody i didn't until years later Wow, wow. A lot of people think, how in the world could somebody not tell when something happens like that? But because of that, um, what's drilled in your mind is a young, fragile, insecure woman already, and then being more insecure when you're being threatened by three young teenagers or young gentlemen telling you that they're going to hurt you if you say anything. Right. You know, um, that had to be very traumatic. So, uh, was that the last time that anything, something like that ever happened? It wasn't. Um, later on, I uh, got into another abusive marriage, well, a, a, abusive marriage, uh, which lasted for eight years. I stayed in it for eight years. And then also after that, I got a divorce from him. And Do you have children? I do. I have two sons. Did your children witness any of the abuse? They, they did. And um, yes, and they... Uh, later on, they spoke about it and told me, you know, what they saw and, you know, mm -hmm. and things like that. Wow. So why do you think that you went into a domestic violence um, relationship after you come out of being, you know, raped? Because I wasn't healed. Still, I wasn't healed. Mm -hmm. I still felt the low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I still felt the unworthiness of, you know, thinking that I was not pretty enough or you know mm. things like that so you finally divorced him and when you divorced him um did you date again i did, did. um i met this gentleman um maybe about four years later and um he was a drug dealer who who promised me everything so um 
me still having a low self-esteem, I fell for everything that he told me. Wow. Was he abusive, too? He was very abusive. Yes, he was. Really? Can you give us some kind of um, situations, that things that he would do? Yes. Uh, uh, he would um, spit on me, uh, urinate on me. Um, I can remember the, the last straw for me was when he came and uh, put a gun to my head and pulled the trigger, but the gun didn't go off. Wow, so he literally actually tried to take your life. He did. So he wasn't just being abusive in a routine. How long were you with this man? I was with him for four years. Wow, so you were with your, you were a teenager in gang rape. Yes. Then you got married and you were with him for eight years. Eight years. And then you go into another relationship that was domestic violence. Because um, you were really just looking for acceptance. You were looking for love in all the wrong places, so to speak. Correct. And he did some horrific things to you. I remember you even said in the interview inside where he made you stand in a corner or something naked. Yes, he uh, came in one night and stripped me of my clothing and made me stand in a corner while he uh, held a gun, to, uh, gun pointed at my head. Wow. And Man. that was for all, the whole night. Wow. So when the trigger didn't go off another time, which was the last time, um, you said that your children were praying? Yes, yes. My children were uh, saying the Lord's Prayer. And that's the only thing that I could hear uh, while he was holding a gun to my head. And as they were saying that, I joined in with them. And um, yes, it was nothing but God that saved me that night. Because how many times did the did he keep popping the lock or ch trying to pull the trigger? Uh, I can remember at least three times he pulled the trigger. Wow, and it did not it go did off. It did not go off. And then what happened? Then he went out, he got upset and uh, eventually gave up, went outside and pulled the trigger and the gun went off. Wow, guys, she literally is a miracle. And you even stated he went to prison. He went to prison for 15 years. And then something you did that's not very common. Tell us what you did. Yes. Uh, I went to visit him in prison. And um, I only said three words to him. And those three words were, I forgive you. Wow. Which, I mean, which literally set me free. Mm -hmm. And that's what launched you into doing your purpose, writing your book, yes. telling your story, having your uh, ministry, your outreach and stuff of helping domestic violence um, victims to overcome and become advocates Correct. and uh, victors. Correct. That is so amazing. Connie, if you could be an encouragement to um, the viewers that will be watching this uh, video, can you say something to them to help them to focus forward to overcome domestic violence and to break the generational cycles? I would say, first of all, you have to know your worth. Talk to someone. Uh, if someone, someone is going to believe you. Just speak it, speak, speak on it, mm -hmm. and let people know what's going on in your life because it could save your life. So, yes. So people. Um, they want to know how they can get in touch with you again. How can they get your book so they can get the detailed version of what happened in your life over the years? Okay, yes. You can go on Amazon.com and just key in My Silent Cry from Victor, Victim to Victor. You can also get an autographed copy from Connie Burris 1969 at gmail.com. I love it. Connie, you definitely are a testimony. You definitely are a miracle. Um, and the thing is, it's not over, guys. She has an amazing story. She has literally come from the pit to the palace. And when I say from the pit to the palace, she has literally met the man of her dreams who was here with us at the show today. Tell us um, about this gentleman. Yes, my husband, Reverend Antoine Burris. He is um, so supportive, so loving. Uh, we've been with uh, together, been married for 11 years, and he has just been my world right now. He is, supports me in everything that I do, and I mean, it's amazing. I love it because um, 
you know, there are people out here that may have went through some hard times and they've struggled and think that there's no hope. I've made so many mistakes. I've made wrong choices. I've beat myself up thinking that I can never get it right. Nobody's ever going to want me because of what you've been told. You've been told things falsely. There is hope. This is evidence right here. This is a true testimony story of how she came from her pit to her palace in her relationship um, idea. She, she, you probably thought you never could find somebody. I did. You know, because I she did. was told that nobody could be better than what she had. And look at her now. She's married to a man who loves the Lord. He does ministry and he supports her and he has compassion for her. And he's very patient with her and her healing. And I love that. I think that's so amazing. So, Connie, I thank you so much for taking the time to come all the way to Atlanta, Georgia to be on my show at 106liveradio.com and to do a special interview with me in the studio as well as doing the interview on this broadcast here with Focus Full and Robin on the go. Guys, what do I always say? It's very important to keep your thoughts in your mind positive. That way, so you can believe it, so you can walk through and achieve it. And that's exactly what Miss Connie's doing here today. Guys, if you want to get connected with your girl, Robin Shockley, with Focus Forward Robin on the go, because you never know where I'm going to be, reach out to me on my website at www.robinshockley.com so you can share your pit to purpose story. What do I always say? If you think a thing, you will believe a thing. If you believe it, you will achieve it. Just like Miss Connie Burris is doing here today. Y'all be blessed.